Welcome back, and it's Wednesday, the 9th of April, and Harley Schlanger's back after two weeks. And Harley, uh, there's a lot of major issues going on worldwide. Uh, let's start off with what's going on in Europe and, of course, the push by uh, Newland and Obama and Kerry uh, to continue to lie about what happened in Kiev and the push toward war. Well, this is really, I think, the most important thing that people should be focused on is that we have a president who is not doing anything on behalf of the country, everything on behalf of foreign financial interests that are crushing this country and destroying our freedom. And the problem that the empire, and when I say the empire, I mean the London-based financial empire, which is the, the center of the problem leading up to the crash of 2008 and afterwards, the so-called too-big-to-fail banks. The problem that they have is that their policies are horrible. They're killing people in Greece. They're going to kill people in Ukraine. They're killing people in this country with a health care plan, so-called health care plan. And as people start to rebel, they're going with even more crazy policies, like the International Monetary Fund policies in Ukraine, which are cutting the standard of living by 50% of people who are already hungry. And so this is an unsustainable system. And the head of the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi, who is an old uh, city of London hand for many, many years, Draghi is having to choose between an extensive quantitative easing policy for Europe, which they're afraid will lead to hyperinflation, or he can go with a bail-in policy, which he knows will lead to a collapse of the banks. So they don't have any viable alternative. And that's why Obama is jumping up and down like a puppet on a string that he is, blaming Russia for what's happening in eastern Ukraine. And if I may just take a moment to explain this to your listeners who have been subjected to real Goebbels-style Gerbils, propaganda against Putin. In eastern Ukraine, you have over 50 percent, in some parts 60 percent of the population, are of Russian descent. That is, that they're not considered Ukrainian. Uh, but that's a part of Ukraine which has benefited in the last 20 years from its relationship with Russia, because they have machine tool shops there, they're productive, they're integrated into the Russian space program, and so on. And so when the phony revolution was made, fueled by extremists uh, in Ukraine and by people like Victoria Nuland of the State Department, their policy was to punish the people of Ukraine this new government that's coming in, in order to pay off the debt that Ukraine owes because of the endemic corruption, no matter who's been in power there, whether it's Yanukovych, Timoshenko, or whoever, they, there's been corruption. But they owe a lot of money, and the banks are demanding that money be collected, and so they demanded a government which will squeeze every penny out of the population, including a 10 to 20 to 30 percent devaluation of the currency, 50% cuts in pensions, 40% uh, increase in oil and gas prices, and so on. So people in eastern Ukraine said, why should we put up with this when the Russians are offering the people in Crimea uh, subsidies for health care, for education, for oil and gas, and so on? Uh, exactly. When from Ukraine, all we're being offered is, is uh, persecution and, and cutbacks. So you had a group of people uh, seize buildings in Donetsk and other cities. Now, immediately, the Ukrainian government and Victoria Nuland in Senate testimony this morning, here's a scoop for your listeners, this morning, Nuland said, this is being done by Russian soldiers. <laughs> now, the idiots in Congress didn't even ask, what's your evidence? Because there is a report out of Ukraine that a top official of the Ukrainian government went there to mediate with the people who seized the building, the pro-Russians who seized the building. And he reported, there are only Ukrainians, there are no Russians here. Exactly. So here you have Newland lying to the Congress. She should go to jail for lying under oath. You have John Kerry running all over the world lying about this. You have Obama saying Putin is responsible for these uprisings, when the fact is that it's his own policies pushed through this puppet government of Ukraine, which is leading to the uprisings. So as Larouche has been warning, 
this is putting us on a course to a war. But for what purpose? Is it about Ukraine? Is it about Russia? No, it's about the collapse of the financial system in the West. And so we have to make sure that when people speak on these things, they speak in an educated way, as opposed to with the psychological warfare propaganda of the U.S. media. And that's why it's important for people to follow these discussions on your program, because this is one of the means that people have of getting the truth out to the American people who are being lied to by the Washington Post, the New York Times, CNN, Fox. CNN and Fox have the same line, that it's Putin. So it doesn't crazy? matter if you're left or right. Defi- if you're taking defines- your news from Kerry, you're lying. The problem is that uh, the regular media, uh, I call, I basically are, are damaging the possible future of America and the Western world. Because we're oh, marching, we're marching into World War III. We're marching into economic devastation. Uh, I don't think people realize that the current policies that are forcing Russia to take action in China and their allies will probably, within the next year and a half, cause a 65 to 70 percent devaluation of the dollar, force us into a war with Syria and Iran that are almost certainly will be a regional nuclear war, at least. And most people don't realize. And I want to ask you ask uh, this of Lyndon if you think this will trigger. But an attack on Iran will trigger an India-Pakistani exchange because Pakistan, although they're a different sect of Islam, has already committed their nuclear weapons to defend Iran. And that means that we will have a two-minute warning range, inter- uh, intercontinental ballistic missile exchange between India and Pakistan, and most certainly will start to involve the, third, the, the, the main, great powers of Russia and America. That guarantees that the annihilation of the human race. I don't think people realize that this is going to, it's, it's like a, a, it's lighting a small trigger, lighting a candle that'll start off an explosion, it'll start off eventually a larger explosion that'll actually end up annihilating everything on the planet. Well, and um, as you think, know, there are people in these uh, uh, nuclear agencies, and I'm not talking about the regular military, but people who are part of this Air Force utopian nuclear grouping that actually believe you could fight and win a nuclear war, and they're willing to risk all of our lives on their crazy theories. Yeah, it's a, it's called, called a nuclear pyrrhic victory. Uh, we're all <laughs> annihilated. We're all annihilated, but there's one cell preserved in a vessel, in a, in a vehicle in space like Superman, heading toward a distant planet that might be Earth-like, containing the genetic code of a stock of human beings, but not one live creature left. And before they die, they can say, well, we won. Right, we won because we're sending a spacecraft into deep space. Pretty so this is the it? kind of thinking, when you see John Kerry, uh, Kerry is at this point, every time he speaks on this question, he's putting out lies. Every time Obama speaks, he's putting out lies. Victoria Nuland is a known liar. And the thing that they're especially lying about is why they're doing this. This isn't making the world safer for America. It's making it much more dangerous. It's the, this neocon liberal imperialist alliance of the Samantha Powers and the Susan Rice's allied with Dick Cheney's Victoria Nuland that they actually believe that uh, we won the Iraq war, what we did in Iraq was good. They believe that we can use our military power to enforce people to accept the domination of these financial institutions, and they don't realize there's a rebellion going on worldwide, and it's only a matter of time before the American people stop acting so damn stupid and fight these guys. Yeah, and the problem is we, um, we have a Congress, both Republicans and Democrats, that the vast majority of them are basically just like a deer in the headlights, they're doing nothing. But we need to activate them as citizens to get the job done quickly. We're not just talking about winning the midterm elections. We're talking about doing something right for America and for the world now or else. Very serious. Back in a moment. Welcome back. And uh, Harley, let's uh, let's get into this uh, more deeply. Uh, Let's continue the story that we talked about before, about the drive in Ukraine and the lies that are going on. And then we'll move on to these other very important topics uh, that are happening right now. They're going to, in a sense, determine the history of mankind for this third millennium. Well, the and, and I want to again just state what we what we discussed at the beginning, so people really understand this. That the reason there's no strategic reason for a confrontation between the United States and Russia. 
There's no strategic reason for the European Union to have pushed to force Ukraine to choose between the EU and Russia. And as General Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said, there's no strategic reason for there to be a a cessation of collaboration between the Russian and the U.S. military. Now, just to give people a sense of the background on this, the Russian military is cooperating with the United States on at least four areas. One is Afghanistan. The Russians are doing everything they can to help us uh, extricate our forces from Afghanistan. And what that means is they're doing their, uh, they're protecting the routes, both to allow equipment in and to allow equipment and soldiers out. Secondly, they're collaborating with us on Iran, and it does appear, despite all the fulminating of Netanyahu and, and John McCain, that the Iranians have made a solid agreement that they're not going to pursue the enriching of uranium, at least at the present, to the point where they could build weapons with it. Three, on the Syrian gas question, now, Putin saved Obama from a total embarrassment had the United States gone in and attacked Syria. Uh, because it's now coming out, as Seymour Hersh has been reporting, and Hersh is one of the, the most important of the exposers of CIA fraud and corruption going back to the 70s. Hersh has a piece in Salon magazine, which is largely from Pentagon sources, saying that Obama knew that the chemical weapons attack in Syria, which Obama said was Assad crossing the red line, was not done by Assad's forces, but by rebel forces. Uh, Seymour Hersh identifies the location where the weapons were stored and constructed in Turkey, how Erdogan, the dictator of Turkey, helped get it across the border into Syria, and how the rebels launched a sarin attack and it was immediately blamed on Assad. And that what Hirsch said is that the Pentagon people went public because they saw the evidence that the Russians had, and they said it was irrefutable evidence. And they did not want to be involved in a war started for a fraud, again, just as the war against Iraq was a fraud, the so-called weapons of mass destruction. So the Russians bailed Obama out on Syria, on Iran. They're cooperating in Afghanistan. And the fourth area is that the Russians have the most serious anti-heroin operation in the world because they're worried about Afghan heroin coming into Russia to affect their own people, but also to affect people in in Eastern Europe. Uh, Iran is involved in this because Iran, a nation of 70 million people, has 4 million heroin addicts. And also the United States. I don't know if you heard this, but the governor of Vermont, the state of Vermont, in his State of the Union address, said the number one problem affecting Vermont is heroin addiction of young people. And then it was confirmed that Deval Patrick in in Massachusetts said the same thing's true there. So the Russians and General Ivanov have had very close cooperation with the United States military on eradicating uh, opium traffic, heroin traffic from uh, Afghanistan. Not in the British areas where the British do nothing to stop it. And the United States cut off, as part of the sanctions, that cooperation. And what Ivanov said is that this is an example of how sanctions against Russia are going to have a bigger effect against the United States, because the Russians are going to continue their anti-heroin operations on the border. But they'll now be able to do nothing to help the United States with the traffic coming out of Afghanistan going to America. Right. So Obama by canceling cooperation, is making it impossible for us to protect our country from this massive influx of cheap and deadly heroin from Afghanistan. Exactly. So, but you remember, remember now, George Soros spent $80 million to, quote, try to legalize marijuana, which is an entry drug, in America. Uh-huh. And he also owns the drug market intake into Europe. George Soros and his bunch band of criminal drug smugglers. And he and the so, Sandlers were largely responsible. The Sandlers, who were mortgage-backed security crooks, who sold their operation to the Bank of America, they and Soros put up 30 million bucks in seed capital in 2000, end of 2007, early 2008, 
to fund the Obama campaign and build up ACORN and build up the street organization, which illegally flooded the caucuses and gave Obama the nomination. Right. So, and of course, when you talk about Soros, you're talking about Wall Street. You're talking about the city of London. So what you have is an operation which is supposedly aimed at Russia, which is going to hurt Europe and the United States more than it will Russia. Now, that's why LaRouche is saying we have to escalate our drive to get rid of Obama, because Obama is knowingly taking measures that are going to kill Americans, as we know he's doing with the so-called Affordable Care Act and so on. That not only will it kill Americans in the small numbers, but if he continues, it will lead to nuclear war. Now, these warnings are beginning to come out of Europe because they're now talking about putting two battalions of NATO forces into Poland. They're, they're now giving seven F-16s to Romania. They're stationing F-16s in Latvia and Lithuania. There was a scare this week in the Swedish press <clears throat> saying the Russians were about to invade the Baltic states and the island of Gothenburg to set up a base to attack Sweden. Now, that's the kind of crap that's in the European press. Now, even as that's going on, though, in Germany, there was a poll out yesterday where 59% of the people said they oppose sanctions against Russia. 59% of the Germans. Right. And there, the, the Carnegie Endowment put out a, a special report saying that Germany, if push comes to shove, might break with the Western countries and go with Russia. Now, why is that so important? Who's been doing the bailout of the banks by giving money to Greece, Italy, and Spain. It's been Germany. Germany was told that the price they had to pay for reunification is they had to bankroll the corrupt banks looting of the southern European economies to sustain the euro. Right. Now, while Merkel has been 100% on board, there are people in her party who are starting to move away. There are people in the Social Democrats, people in the Links Partei and other parties in Germany who are saying enough is enough, we're getting out. I think Germany has paid more than its price. And this whole idea, this experiment of the European Union is not working. It's designed to suck the nations dry and ultimately a sturdy fascism to kill a lot of people. Welcome back, and uh, Harley, <clears throat> the situation is very desperate right now. Uh, we know that in a couple of days we're going to have the blood moons with uh, Mark Belts talking about this, so we're trying to get him back on in the next few days. We know that uh, the current policy, if you just look at it on its face, we're heading toward a time of a major uh, correction of the world economy in terms of, uh, number one, uh, we've done things to force Russia and China's hand to actually destroy the petrodollar and the basis for the international use of the American dollar as a world currency. One of our primary, if you want to call it exports, is debt. And we enforce it with a giant military that we won't soon be able to afford. That means that there's a time window that the powers that be that want to use America as a golem to enforce this world bankster heisting of every nation of the earth uh, is closing. The, uh, the British banking empire is about to be ended. And that means what, you're, what La, Linda LaRouche and your organization are talking about is the only sane situation that the human race will survive. Uh, people in Ukraine have a very, very straightforward decision to make. Do they want to go under austerity fascism and be starved to death? Or do they want to have a chance of building an economy with the Russians that will allow them to have some dignity? <clears throat> That's real straightforward. We have the same situation in Europe. I mean, don't they, haven't they looked at the Greeks and the Italians? And the, uh, the Ukrainians have. The Ukrainians, the Ukrainians looked at what's happening in Greek and uh, Greece and <clears throat> Italy, and they're saying, we don't want it. But the parliament exactly. voted complete power to the IMF. Now, right. uh, you know, let me just tell you one other thing that, that happened today, which is that we have an uh, ad in the Washington Times, which has the front page uh, pullover and then a full page inside, with a picture of Obama over a mushroom cloud. Huh. And it says, impeach it. Obama or face nuclear war. And the last time we did this, they had uh, uh, over 100,000 hits. 
Now, we're wow. also, this is distributed to all the Congress. Uh, people in the Congress are beginning to get these reports. Some of them are coming to us thanking us for telling them about the Nazis taking over in Ukraine with support of the United States. But that's only 30-something 30, 30 members of Congress. Today, when Newland lied to the Congress, uh, a congressman named Cohen, Stephen Cohen from Tennessee, uh, just egged her on to keep lying. And so we've got this situation where the Congress so he, needs to be completely deluged by calls to tell right, them to get yeah. rid of Obama. So and what he I was doing this, is he was very actually trying to make right it now. Yeah. So when, Cohen, when uh, Congressman Cohen was doing this, uh, he was actually drawing her into a, into a, if you want to call it the the the, uh, the kill box uh, in terms of uh, political science, the science political kill box. You know, like the military. Uh, to basically draw out to say even more outlandish lies so we can show that the entire administration is deserving of impeachment because they're going to put us in dire straits. And this isn't just a game. What they're playing right now is a run-up toward World War III. Well, and the, the Congress, look, the fact that some congressmen told us they didn't know this about Nazis shows you that on the one hand they weren't paying attention on the other hand, they buy the administration propaganda hook, line, and sinker. And so what we're dealing with here is a lying administration that's able to impose their will on a Congress that doesn't fight. For example, Lazy. Look, the Dodd-Frank bill, no one read the bill before they voted for it. No one read the Affordable Care Act before they voted for it. These are bills Dodd-Frank had all these exceptions written into it by swap dealers and hedge funds. The Affordable Care Act was written by the insurance industry, and yet yeah, people right. voted for it. And as Pelosi said, well, we'll know what's in it after we pass it. That is so the insane. Congress bears a lot uh, of the blame. I, I call it the, uh, the, the legislative fox rule. If you have foxes legislating how to build the chicken coop, you're not going to have many chickens. Well, that's a lot of chicken bones, though. Oh, yeah, you know, you'll have some bones, you'll have some remnants of feathers, perhaps, but uh, yeah. you won't have chickens going buck, buck, or, or giving eggs. They'll be gone. Yeah. Now, on the, the Kerry question, you know, Kerry is continuing to say that Assad has to be thrown out because he used chemical weapons against his own uh, people. Now, there are two points here. One is the Seymour Hirsch report, as well as a number right. of other reports, confirm that it was the Syrian rebels and not the right. Syrian government that used the chemical weapons. Uh, but by Kerry the way, the and Samantha the Power were... said, we have to give them more weapons to the rebels and escalate their well, ability to fight a war in order to have peace. Now, isn't did you hear about the new man pads? It, yeah, did you hear about the new man pads and the, uh, yeah. these, these high-speed armor-piercing uh, weapons that can be you know, remotely targeted? that they're giving yeah. to the rebels? Yeah. This yeah. is just really, really adding to the... This is like saying, gee, dear, there's a, there's a, our fire is a little out of control. You're camping? And the husband says, just a second, I'm going to go to the car and get a gas can. Yeah, right. <laughs> now that's Don't worry, I'll put it out with a gas with. can. That's what we're dealing <laughs> it's, with. It's so nuts. And, and then when you, you think about it, and then we have these pinhead congressmen and senators that don't even work, do the work they have their junior staffers that are in their early 20s probably never actually did a real job except went to school and then all of a sudden they're thrust to become the so-called experts that these congressmen rely on and uh, they're doing nothing it's just obscene it's like excuse me we have kids telling congressmen that are too lazy to get out of their own way passing legislation and just not even calling them on the line uh, Obama and his entire administration they're just marching us over the edge and we have people like Susan Rice who are still causing trouble and still lying, and yet, <laughs> it's just amazing that why, why doesn't the government do its job? I just don't understand it. Then they, all the Republicans want to do is somehow they want to be able to take over the Senate. What are they going to do then once they have power? They won't have any excuses that they can't control or do things. What do we do then? Will we see total incompetence on the part of the Republican Party, or are they going to get their act together? Well, what LaRouche is saying is that the way we're going to change this country is that we're going to get Obama out. Because if you get Obama right. out, then the Democratic Party no longer has to propitiate him and defend him. Secondly, right. the Republicans, who at this point are 
uh, taking impeachment off the table. If you had Democrats pushing for impeachment, the Republicans would have to be stop being so stupid. And so right. the key to changing the country is immediately impeaching Obama. Now, the Democrats are beginning to realize that if Obama stays in office, they're going to lose the 2014 elections. They're going to lose the Senate. The Republicans will continue to hold the House. And we'll have a mess because the Republicans have no solutions. All they're trying to do is let Obama wreck the country so they can win the presidency in 2016. But if we can move some Democrats into going for impeachment and actually get Obama out, and that's what Keisha's campaign is so important for, then we have the possibility to change the whole party system away from top-down control by Wall Street and instead have it controlled by the interests of its people, the, the constituencies and the voters. So that's where this, when you talk about crisis and opportunity, that's the opportunity from this crisis. If people will learn the lesson, which is you don't have to go along with Wall Street, you can fight them. And Glass-Steagall is a way to break Wall Street. In Great Britain this week, there's a whole new debate taking up on Glass-Steagall again, led by Andrew Haldane, who's on the board of the Bank of England, led by some people in the Financial Times. But it's triggered by what we've been doing. And so this creates the opening in Britain for this thing to spread to Europe. Now, if Europe doesn't go with Glass-Steagall, Europe's going to go with a bailout and a bail-in, and that's not going to work. And well, as you, Europe goes into trouble... The, 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 the day that they pass this bail-in, I call it Pitchfork Day. Yeah. Uh, I, I, let's put it this way. If they did that to me, every weapon that I could muster, everybody that I know that could march on the Capitol building would be marching. <clears throat> it would be the end of civilian of rule by these governments. It would be an armed insurrection by the population. <clears throat> And if they think they can kill us all, they're crazy. Most of the military and police will turn on them and march with us and throw their badges to the ground. Welcome back. Uh, Hardy, let's talk about uh, Keisha's campaign and what other issues they're cooking up here. And maybe I'll throw a few things in. Um, the move is about to do a lot of revisions to Obamacare politically. It's far wiser to literally gut it and rebuild it and still leave the, the stench of the Obamacare mess uh, and then fix the parts of it so they rebuild it from the inside out, just like Lee Majors, you know, $6 million man. Uh, uh, on the other hand, we have a situation with Congress uh, women and senators, senators like Keisha Rogers, who will hopefully be elected this uh, coming summer uh, and win the, uh, the full nomination against her rival, who's a millionaire spending all kinds of money. She spent, I think, $27,000 so far. And uh, she's way out front. She has real answers and policies. And the answer by her so-called opponent is that he won't negotiate with her because she wants to impeach Obama. I just He won't that's... debate. He's running and he's trying to hide behind his money. He's yeah, paying off organizations to not have Keisha come and appear so that she can't address them. Now, yeah, isn't that, isn't that's that amazing? That's, the yeah. real corruption of this party system. But right. it doesn't matter because Keisha now is, is so effective that people are watching her closely. They're, right. they're, uh, the media is calling for interviews all the time now. They, you know, she's a, a big story in Texas. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So you've got, I think you've got a situation where we're out of control for them. Now, today, the last week, rather, we've had squads up in the panhandle, up in North Texas and agriculture areas where there's a terrible drought. And what we're getting is people are saying to us, thank God you're here. No one else is talking about this. Because, you know, as you know, there are a lot of people in this country who are suffering, who right. are unable to pay rent. Uh, they have to choose between food and medicine. Right. Uh, they can't yeah. drive anywhere. They can't heat their homes in the winter or cool them in the summer. Well, uh, there's a lot of a, misery. But there's no one speaking of, for them. Right. If, listen, Harley, if you ask just four or five questions, do you have $2,000 if you had a crisis right now? Do you have three months of emergency reserve money to just pay your bills, keep your house heated, 
put gas in your car and be able to buy clothes to cover your back? Uh, do you have the uh, the capacity to 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 generate income if you lost your primary job? Uh, right now, what's happening is the new jobs that have been replaced, the ones we lost since 2008, are all jobs that we call make jobs. Their levels of employment and dollar value put them in the poverty line. <clears throat> so we have a, a situation now where we have Americans are incredibly uh, on the edge. Any kind of minor disaster will push them over. And uh, millions of Americans, and the problem is, you see, they use the statistics, and people no longer look for work, they drop off the rolls. The actual unemployment rate is far higher than what they're yeah. reporting. So we add all these things together with the instability of the Middle East. And all you need to do is, is choke off the oil at the Strait of Hormuz, and our economy will go crazy. Uh, and it won't be a cheaper oil, even though we have enough oil here in America to make it independent. We don't have rulemaking to say, America first, and then we'll export whatever oil to other countries. So we keep the price of oil down like they do in Saudi Arabia or anywhere else. No, no. If there's a crisis in the Middle East, even though we have more oil than we than, and we export, we will, in natural gas, LNG, we'll end up with a doubling or tripling of our price of oil, which would be incorporated in every food or anything that's moved anywhere. Uh, we'll see uh, the states, which are hanging by their fingernails, go bankrupt, trying to claw at everything they can. I mean, there's even moves by states to see if they can take online businesses and, and, and tax them on every transaction within their state. Well, uh, look at the situation in the two largest states in the country in terms of population, California and Texas, where right. we have Michael Steger running for Pelosi's seat in California and Keisha Rogers running for Senate in Texas. The agricultural sectors are being shut down. They don't have water. They don't have well, food for livestock. The herd level, the cattle herd, is at the lowest level in the United States since 1951. California dairy, most people don't realize California is a big dairy state. It's falling through the floor. Uh, right. Production of leafy, green leafy vegetables, spinach, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, that's 40% of it comes from California in areas which are getting no water from the state water system anymore because right. of the drought. So we're going to have hunger in the United States unless there's dramatic measures taken. Now, this Saturday, and I want your listeners to write this down, this Saturday on the Keisha Rogers for Senate uh, website, you just go on the Google Keisha Rogers for Senate, and we'll get you there. At 3 p.m. Eastern, that's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, 1 o'clock Pacific time, there will be a webcast of Michael Steger and Keisha talking about what we have to do to impeach Obama to get Glass-Steagall and to get a credit policy so we can build the WAPA to start making sure there's going to be water for the future. So right. that's uh, 4 by, by p.m. Way, Eastern, 3 Central, 1 Pacific time on the Keisha Rogers for Senate website. I think what people are going to find is the discussion that Keisha and Michael have both about the crimes of the Obama administration and the so-called environmentalist agenda, which is to reduce population, that they're right. going to counterpose that to what we in the LaRouche movement have been putting forward for a long time, which is a policy of NAWAPA and the thermonuclear fusion economy, which we could get to relatively quickly if we spent some money on it and made a national commitment. And that's the solution for the country. And so I think this is really, people should tune into that. Uh, if you want more information, you can call my office at 800-922-2907. This is Impeachment Central. We're leading the drive to impeach Obama. We had the ad in today's Washington Times. That's the second newspaper in Washington, D.C. The Post, of course, is run by the British. But the Washington Times has a front-page ad that goes onto a, a page near the back, saying impeach Obama for danger of thermonuclear war, and it, it shows Obama with a mushroom cloud next to him. So well, if you want to fight that. this guy, join us, 800-922-2907. That's really excellent, because uh, this is Impeachment Central. When you come on on Wednesdays, we get a really excellent response. Worldwide, people listening in Europe, America, Canada, all over the world, and they need to realize here in America that we have the choice. If we don't start the process of removing Obama from office and getting rid of all we call the progressive Democrats, replacing them with Democrats who put America first and people first, 
uh, they want to have a credit system like the Hamiltonian system so that small businesses can become medium and large businesses where there's not predatory taxes that basically tax small businesses and transnational corporations like General Electric there putting giant uh, finances behind the parties in Acorn. Get and they get huge dollar, subsidies. Huge subsidies and they get $2 billion contracts to set up the medical record system for doctors, which is part of this Obamacare grab of information grab. Uh, it's none of the damn business why I go to the doctor. It's none of the damn business what when they set up death panels and, and make decisions that even override my physician. I don't agree with any of this stuff, and I'm not going to cooperate in any way. And people need to push back. Uh, this idea that passivity is ever going to re reward you with anything, uh, it's the same way with when we deal with the smart meter system. And I told people, stop whining and start doing. You, you may be uncomfortable, tough. That's where it, it comes from. If you don't, aren't in the uncomfortable zone, you're not going to get any reward. If you don't even make a phone call to call your congressman and senator to push forward for this impeachment, if you don't support what's happening with people like Keisha Rogers getting them in office, don't complain when the economy crashes and the dollars devalue. Don't complain when there's no food on the table. Don't complain when Fukushima doesn't just have one disaster, but they're turning on the nuclear reactors in Japan and when a big earthquake, say a year from now, happens, uh, and we have four or five reactor sites, not just Fukushima going up in flames. Don't complain when you have hazmat, you have to seal off your house for a week because the radiation cloud is so intense that if you went outside, you're going to get acute radiation sickness. Don't think that can't happen. We're bioaccumulating right now, and this is just one of many problems that these idiot governments doing. Even Obamacare, written by insurance carriers. I mean, it's catastrophic insurance with high deductibles that eventually, after six months, to charges you massive rates for outstanding deaths for co-pays. And if you don't pay, they have the flak-jacketed Kevlar helmeted, armed to the teeth with hollow-headed bullets, IRS ready to take your home, your car, and put you in jail for not complying. This is not America. Well, this don't forget BS. to call us then. Call us at 800-922-2907. 800-922-2907. 800 Get rid of the, I said, Obamanoma, the tumor in the White House. Let's do an Obamanectomy today. It'll, it'll feel good afterwards. What relief. And don't forget the Saturday webcast on Keisha Rogers for Senate. Yep, and I think her website is Keisha Rogers, R O G E R S dot com. Yeah. E S H A Rogers dot com. I think she has a link there as well. Thank you for listening and take care, take action. Back in hour number two, hour three, Bill. ...of the problem leading up to the crash of 2008 and afterwards, the so called too big to fail banks. The problem that they have is that their policies are horrible. They're killing people in Greece. They're going to kill people in Ukraine. They're killing people in this country with a health care plan, so-called health care plan. And as people start to rebel, they're going with even more crazy policies, like the International Monetary Fund policies in Ukraine, which are cutting the standard of living by 50% of people who are already hungry. And so this is an unsustainable system. And the head of the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi, who is an old uh, city of London hand for many, many years, Draghi is having to choose between population, including a 10 to 20 to 30 percent devaluation of the currency, 50 percent cuts in pensions, uh, 40 percent increase in oil and gas prices, and so on. So people in eastern Ukraine said, why should we put up with this when the Russians are offering the people in Crimea uh, subsidies for health care, for education, for oil and gas, and so on? Uh, exactly. When from Ukraine, all we're being offered is, is uh, persecution and, and cutbacks. So you had a group of people uh, seize buildings in Donetsk and other cities. Now, immediately, the Ukrainian government... And Victoria Nuland in Senate testimony this morning, here's a scoop for your listeners, this morning in the last 20 years from its relationship with Russia, because they have machine tool shops there, they're productive, they're integrated into the Russian space program, and so on. And so when the phony revolution was made, fueled by extremists uh, in Ukraine and by people like Victoria Nuland of the State Department, their policy was to punish the people of Ukraine, this new government that's coming in, in order to pay off the debt that Ukraine owes, 
because of the endemic corruption, no matter who's been in power there, whether it's Yanukovych, Timoshenko, or whoever, they, there's been corruption. But they owe a lot of money, and the banks are demanding that money be collected, and so they demanded a government which will squeeze every penny out of the... Welcome back, and it's Wednesday, the 9th of April, and Harley Schlanger's back after two weeks. And Harley, uh, there's a lot of major issues going on worldwide. Uh, let's start off with what's going on in Europe and, of course, the push by uh, Newland and Obama and Kerry uh, to continue to lie about what happened in Kiev and the push toward war. Well, this is really, I think, the most important thing that people should be focused on is that we have a president who is not doing anything on behalf of the country, everything on behalf of foreign financial interests that are crushing this country and destroying our freedom. And the problem that the empire, and when I say the empire, I mean the London-based financial empire, which is the, the center, an extensive quantitative easing policy for Europe, which they're afraid will lead to hyperinflation. Or he can go with a bail-in policy, which he knows will lead to a collapse of the banks. So they don't have any viable alternative. And that's why Obama is jumping up and down like a puppet on a string that he is, blaming Russia for what's happening in eastern Ukraine. And if I may just take a moment to explain this to your listeners who have been subjected to real Goebbels-style propaganda against Putin. In eastern Ukraine, you have over 50 percent, in some parts 60 percent of the population, are of Russian descent. That is, that they're not considered Ukrainian. Uh, but that's a part of Ukraine which has benefited 